Oh, whoops a daisy there, people. Sorry about that. Welcome to another exciting edition of episode of This is our live thing right on the back rock. <laughs> okay, uh this video is essentially for my friend Jen down in San Antonio. Hi Jim. Jen. Oh well, kinda like you said Jim. Uh, um sorry. Again. I just posted something to her Facebook profile, and we have man search for meaning somewhere around here. Yeah. Somewhere. And finding it's another matter. But um. Who's that by? Uh, uh, Doctor Frankel. Oh, yeah. Um, now, here. now I, I gave my wife a copy of. Um, I wonder if you can get it off a of Gutenberg project for free. Oh, there's a PDF you can download. Yeah, but I mean, well, Gutenberg basically. That. Um, man's search for ultimate meaning, I believe. I gave that to my wife, but that I think you really need to read man's search for meaning. So for those who haven't read Man's Search for Meaning, maybe I should put a link in this video to, to the PDF. There may be multiple PDFs to that, that book. I don't know, but... One never knows. Yeah. Um, you know, like, like, see, this is how I look at what happened last night. Okay? There was some... There, there were actually a number of positive things that came out of what happened last night. Hey, at least we found out what was going on. Yeah, numero uno. We found out what's going on. So now we can deal with it. I can't help it that my oncologist is a dingbat. Yeah. Um, He's, I don't know what's wrong with him. Well, I see. I think he doesn't really care. Well, there are a lot of very intelligent people, and doctors tend to be very intelligent people, that on the, how do we say, the, the general social level, they're not to adapt. You know, they're they're. They're not very good at making friends. Yeah, and their communication skills aren't aren't always the best. And now I personally get Doctor Barr. He's a hell of a lot better than yeah. this dang bad. Um, but see, here's some. Per positive things that happened last night. Numero uno. Now we know what's going on. So we can face it. We can deal with it. Numero dos, we can look I know at, it's not my asthma going. Uh, well, well there, there you go. Numero tres and numero dos. We have, it's not the asthma and um, it's not a blood clot. Because when the doctor can oh gosh. That scared the shit out of me. Yeah, I'm like um, you're just going to give her blood thinners? I don't think so. I think you need to do an, a surgery and take that clot out. Well, sometimes but, they can't really. Yeah. You know, make it move. But, um, you know, it, I think it's important for us to always look on the positive side. There's always something positive. You know, Dr. Frankel, he, in, in his book, Man Search for Meaning, he, he, talks about this this uh, lady and I want to say an older lady but older in a Nazi concentration camp you know you could be 20 years old and look like you're 90 yeah. um, she was laying in bed and Dr. Frankel went to talk to her if you want to call it a bed a cot or whatever whatever they yeah. had and she looked out at this tree she said that's my only friend there were no leaves on that tree. It was a dead tree. But she had a friend. And to a lot of people, that it's a dead tree. No, that's her friend. She talks to that tree. That's important for her. It may not be important to you. It may not be important to me. But I think it should be important to all of us that she had a friend. In her last hours, her last days, she had somebody to talk to. Or something to talk to. And like last night, I mean, we, we can look at it in a very negative light or we can look at it in a very positive light. And the positive light is numero uno, there's no blood clot. Numero dos, uh, now we know what's going on, so we can deal with it. 
I don't, I'm not even going to go into the negative things because why bother with that? <clears throat> Always focus on the positive. And there's this thing where if you think positively. Oh, uh, what's this little book, uh, 14,000 Things to Be Happy About? Yeah. I mean, like, I, I actually made a video about that once because the original. Well, I can't read it right now because it's kind of a, you know. Yeah. The original title, I think, was 10,000 Things to Be Happy About. And then the lady published a second volume, and then she published the third, which was a combination of the two books. And, I mean... Here it is. You go outside... You want to show it? Here. Here. Put it over that way a little bit. There you go. 14,000 Things to Be Happy About. And who's the author? Uh, the Happy Book. And well, it says Revised and Updated. The Happy Book by Barbara Ann Kip Kipfer. K-I-P-F-E-R. Okay. This is revised and updated, yeah. 14,000 things. Okay. To be happy about. Um, I'll give you John. He'll purr yeah. for you. Yeah, he will. Um, He's quite the purring machine, too. You know, that I have soda water. That's happy, you know. I mean... Now, I, I, I'm, I'm also going to say that um, pride of place, for me, anyway, makes a difference. Um, and no disrespect to Jen or any of my other friends, but I hate Texas. You know, I lived there for 40 years. I survived there for 40 years. But see, but even then, even there, I can look at it as, in a positive or negative light. I learned a lot of lessons in Texas. That's a positive thing. There are, it's not like, Texas is 100% negative. This is a long way from it. There are definitely positives. Anywhere you've lived, anywhere you live, there are positives. Back home in Spain, you know, even in my day under Franco, there were positive things. Did we, how do you say? Um, in my mind, I kind of know who to blame this for in my, to me, it's my mother because I actually have a picture of her when I was about three years old. She was bent over to give me a kiss, and she had a cigarette behind her back, and you, she's like, I think she tried to blow smoke into my mouth. Oh. I mean, that's ridiculous. Mm. Uh, it's around somewhere. I remember, I have the picture. Black and white picture. Like, well, see, I, stupid. I can go back and look at España in, in the sense of, um... My heart book. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, we played football in the plaza. And, um, oh gosh, do we have good food in Spain? Texas, oh my goodness, you want to talk about good food? You go to San Antonio. San Antonio has the best Tex Mex on the planet. Or you can look at the negatives in there, you know, whatever. But, I mean, look, if we went to San Antonio, it would be, you know, we'd go to the Riverwalk, we'd go to the, uh, the Alamo, we'd go to some restaurants and maybe meet up with a few people. But if we're lucky, we'll be able to go on a honeymoon to Chinatown in New York or Boston. Prefer New York. But that's actually not looking promising at this point. But we're still looking. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a choice. Everything's a choice in life. Everything's a decision. You can choose the positive or you can choose the negative. It's up to you. And if you want to read Dr. Frankel's book, Man's Search for Meaning, I will try and provide a PDF uh, or a link to the PDF Go version of it. Go to Gutenberg right. Project. And, um... You know, the, the first half of the book, he's describing his theory in practical terms. And then the second half of the book, he gets rid of all the... Extras. The, yeah, the extras. And he, he goes straight, this, this, this. You know, he points to each point. But um, I think it's important to read the whole book not just one part of the book. And I remember he talked about when he was in the train, 
on the train car and they were going through his hometown or the town he was he lived in had lived in and he wanted to look out the window you know there's this little window in the train car it's a cattle car and the, everybody in the in the car is like oh, you've already seen all that we want to see it now I I would think I, to me I can't say what I would do in that situation because I'm not in that situation at the same time I can say I would like to go ahead and give that person the chance to see it because that would mean a lot to that person it wouldn't mean as much to me as it would mean to that person so I would prefer that person to get the look to get to see what makes them happy what made them happy another thing that Dr. Frankel talked about was this individual in, in one of the um, camps in one of the barracks he would have nightmares and he wasn't sure if he should wake him up or not because maybe well, that's not to make anybody have nightmares. Yeah. Places. Maybe the reality of life in the camp him. was worse than the nightmares. Maybe it was better that he had nightmares than to be woken up and have to face the realities of camp of camp life. You know, look, there are so many things. Music, uh, your imagination. You know, I mean, my goodness, look, look at the ceiling. You know, look, there's a Hobbit map. There's a zombie poster. There's a zombie poster on the wall. There are rifles up there. Although I no longer have a place to shoot, so I have to find a new place to well, shoot. We'll find you. But I like shooting. I like target practice. I mean, go find something you enjoy doing. Doesn't have to be expensive. My goodness, the I have like almost 500 rounds of ammo for the Mosin. You, well, actually, it wouldn't take long to shoot all that because when you're target doing target practice, it, uh. you use a lot of ammo pretty fast. It's when you're actually having to use the ammo for practical purposes, such as food. I'm not a hunter, but if I were, you know, then I wouldn't sit there and just shoot off rounds. I would sit there and sit there and sit there and wait until a moose or a deer or something came by. Squirrel. Yeah. Chipmunk. Well, now you shoot a chipmunk with a moose and there ain't going to be Dang. nothing left. You might find his tail if you're lucky. Yeah. Um, but then, you know. You, you know, find his stripes. <laughs> yeah. Then, then you... You know, you're not using as much ammo because you have to preserve it, and you take a shot, and then all the animals scatter, and... Uh, Hear the yell out of them. Yeah, but, um... I wish I could have met Dr. Frankel, or at least sent him a letter, because one thing I used to do, books that I, I read that I really liked, I would send the author a letter saying thank you for writing the book, and because I lost all those letters in, in the in the fire and um, some of those people have since passed away such as Sergeant Frank Fujita but um, anyway it's important to think positive I, I think another way of thinking positive and my friend Jen might disagree with me on this but I think being a prepper as we are and we're, I mean we're preppers uh, to me, that's a positive thing, not a negative thing, because being a prepper, if something were to happen, hopefully it never does, but if something were to happen, natural disaster, man-made disaster, whatever, I mean, look at Katrina. Um, we would be better off than a lot of people would be. It, it's that simple, you know, we... I'm not saying that life would be great under those conditions, because I know it wouldn't be, but we'd get by better than a lot of people would. So, anyway. So, if you have a chance, I highly recommend reading Man's Search for Meaning by Dr. Victor Frankl. F-R-A-N-K-L, I believe. Anyway, thank you.